In this video, we are going to see a basic introduction to R and how to load data and create new variables. So first, we have RStudio here. So first, you need to install R. Once you have installed R, you can download and install RStudio. RStudio needs R to work. And when you open RStudio, you have this window here. And we want to create a new file. So that's easy. We just go to the menu, create a new file an R script. Want to save it right away to give it a name. And we're going to call it intro. And now we can see we have the file over here. And the comments will be executed in the console down here. So we want also to set the working directory to the source field location so that it will find the data in the same folder as um, the current script is. So you see there is a command here executed to change the directory. So first, when we write code, we want it very clear. And we might want to write comments along with the code. And comments in R are written with the hashtag. So if I write hashtag, this is a comment. It will be ignored by R. If I try to run it, you see in the console here, so I press Control and then Enter to uh, run the current line, nothing happens in the console. Like, this is a comment. So first, when we open RStudio, we might have previous data that's still loaded, and we might have some uh, lines in the console. We want to clear that. So to remove data from the environment, here we have no variables, but in case we have some variable, we'll use the command rm. And then we write list equals ls. That will list all the current variables that are present in the memory. And we'll just run that. And that will erase all the variables and all the data that are loaded into R. Then to clear the console, the command is cat. And then we send the character 014, which is the equivalent, oops, the equivalent of control L. And if I run this command, you see that now in the console, we have an empty uh, workspace. So that's just to clear up a bit uh, the workspace before we start working. So now we are going to load the data. So the data is in Stata formats, the one I provide. So we need to load a package for uh, importing Stata format data. And to load the package, we use the command library. And then we give the name of the package. And in our case, it's foreign. OK, I try to run this. It seems to work. Uh, in case it doesn't work and it tells you, oh, you don't have the foreign library or the foreign package, what you do is you go to um, Tools, Install Package. And then you can write foreign. And you will click Install, and it will install the foreign package and all the dependencies. OK, so the package is loaded. I can now import the data. So I will import the data in a data frame that I call my data. So my data, the new variable or the new data frame I create, will be equal to what we read in the format, uh, in the DDA format. And that's in the file gasoline.dta. Uh, I will provide a link uh, in the description on where to get this data from my website. So let's run this command with Control and Enter. And we see that now in the data field, we have a new data frame. And I can expand it. And we can see it has some value. I can also double click on it. And here I can see in a much, much more clear way uh, that I have a province name. So I have various provinces. I have the ID corresponding to the provinces. Um, the year quantities of uh, gasoline sold, the price of the gasoline, the median wage, the income, uh, median income, and the population size. Then I have a number of uh, full service and self-service in the, in the data. 
So if we come back to our script, uh, then we want to maybe use some comments to have summary about the data. So summary statistics. So I will ask R to summarize my data. And here I see in the output, I have for every variable, so the parent's name is just uh, a text. So it doesn't give you a median, a minimum, or things like that. But for province ID or year, quantities, which is the most important, you will have all these quantitative variables. You will have the mean, the max, uh, the quartiles, and uh, the median. Maybe you want to uh, manipulate the names of your variable. So here's the name is province ID, year, etc. If you need to load them in some other variables, the name function is very useful. So I will write names, my data. Oops. And it returns a list of names. I can also use this function to change the name of the variable. Sometimes you have variable with very weird name, uh, like uh, a series of number or thing like that. And you want to rename this. You can click on the name function, press F1. You will have the help here. And you can see that if you use names of my data equal, and then I can put some list of values, it will change the name of uh, your variable. So the F1 key is very useful when you use R, because uh, it's very hard to remember all the functions. So you can just look for the help and see how to use it. OK, so now we have our data frame. Let's see how to access some specific value in the data frame. So for instance, I want to see uh, in my data, for the first observation, what is the province name? I run the command, and I see that it returns NL for Newfoundland and Labrador. So I can also ask for the full list of province names. And here I have the province names for all the entries, uh, all the observations. Um, another way to access a list of uh, variables is to write my data, and then the dollar sign. And then maybe I want the list of prices. So I will write price. And here I have the list of prices. So I could have written my data dollar sign province name, I will have had the same result as in the first case. Maybe I want to create a new variable. So to create a new variable, I have to name it first. So in the my data framework, I want to create a new variable. And I see the quantity here is in thousands. And maybe I want the quantity not in thousands, but I want the base number, like in units. So I would say create a new variable called quantity. And I would say it's the same as quantity um, in thousands. I can press tab. Oh, it didn't find it because I forgot my data. My data dollar sign. And I can write quant and tab, and it will find automatically, automatically complete the name. Very useful for long names. Times a thousand. Press Control and Enter. And now I have a new variable in my data frame. It's called quantity. That's the same as the quantities in thousands, but with a different uh, unit, which is a thousand times bigger. Uh, it's very useful if you want to have um, log values. So for instance, we can have my data log quantity and say I want it to be the log of the uh, my data quantity. And now I have the leg quantity added to my data frame. Maybe I want to access only a subset of the data. So let's say I want to see only the prices for 2001. So I can say subset my data. And then I want to write a condition. And the condition in that 
my data year is equal. I write two equal signs because I don't want my data year to become um, 2001. I want to check if it is 2001. So it's to compare two value. I want to compare the year with the value 2001. If I run this command, I have all the observation for the year 2001 written here. Another way to do the same thing is to go to my data and then to write which observation we want. Well, we want the observation where my data year is equal to 2001, comma, and then maybe I, can, I want just the price or the quantity, but I, here I want every variable, so I will just leave it empty after the comma. And here we see we have the same output as before. So I created a few variables here, and I don't want to maybe create them every time I open this data set, so I want to save the data set. So for that, I'm going to use the command write DTA. OK, so what do I want to put in the new file? I want to put my data. And I have to give a name to this new file. So let's call it gasoline new. And I will just press Control and Enter. And I made a mistake here. It's right E. Let's run it again. Perfect. No error. So a new file has been created. And it's called new, uh, gasoline new. And it has a quantity and the log quantity added to it. Uh, in the next video, we are going to see how to plot the data.